Welcome to the Thameside ERF project site induction. The induction itself will take about 40 minutes of your time and then at the end there is a quick multiple choice test questionnaire to demonstrate your understanding. A pass is 10 out of 10 correct answers. Whether you're on site today as a visitor or to carry out work on site, your safety is our prime objective at all times. If you have any health, safety or environmental concerns whilst you're on site, please raise them with your supervisor and the Viridor site representative. This induction provides you with instructions and guidance to avoid potential hazards and keep you safe. We want you to go home safe every single day and to support that there are three core expectations that Viridor has. These are assess all risks, follow the rules, take ownership. These are the three building blocks of our health and safety arrangements. It's about making sure you've assessed the risk before carrying out the work. It's about following the approved RAMs and following the site rules. And if you see something, take ownership of it, report it to your supervisor and prevent anyone from being harmed from the hazard or the risk that you find. Port of Tilbury welfare facilities are located at the Lock and Key restaurant. When you get to the main entrance, and rather than turn right at the roundabout to go to the Thameside ERF site, turn left and follow the road round and you'll find the Lock and Key restaurant just before Leslie Ford House. At the Lock and Key you will find canteen and toilet facilities which are available to everyone on the Port of Tilbury. Thameside ERF facility is located within the port of Tilbury. Once you're in the port, you'll need to comply with all the port's rules and regulations. To gain access to the site, please look at the diagram on the left hand side of the screen and you'll see a black line. The black line starts at the main entrance of the port and about 100 metres down the road is a roundabout. Take the right hand turn and follow the road straight all the way down to the left hand bend. On the bend there is a filter lane to turn right into the entrance for the construction area. The site itself is currently having demolition and enabling works. These operations consist of removing existing ground bearing structures, UXO clearance and ecology maintenance on the site and for the purposes of this induction we will be running through the hazards and risks which are present. The site is open from 7am to 7pm Monday to Friday. There is no working over the weekends or bank holidays. Take a moment to write down the Thameside ERF site address details. Using the what three words location will bring you directly to the main site entrance. Use these words in this order. Mason, Unity, sand. Why not scan the QR code now and open this what three words address in your browser. Upon arrival to site be mindful you will be crossing a railway line. If the red lights are flashing please stop at the central filter lane to turn right. If not then access the site going no faster than 10 miles per hour. The parking area is located immediately to the left as you enter the gates. It's Viridor's policy to reverse park. So upon arrival each day at site, please be mindful that you're crossing a railway line. If the red lights are flashing, please stop. If they're not, then please access the site going no faster than 10 miles per hour. Uh, the parking area is located behind the gatehouse. Uh, once you've exited your car, if you wouldn't mind going in and signing in at the gatehouse with a security guard. And again, when you're leaving site at night, if you can sign yourself out so that we know where you are at all times. Once you've exited your car, 
if you wouldn't mind signing in at the principal contractor's site management office and again when you're leaving site at night if you could sign your site out so that we all know where you are at all times. The site, welfare and car park area is separated from the main site by a line of Harris fence panels fitted with warning signs and secured closed with a padlock. You are not allowed to access this area unless you have received a suitable site induction. Whenever you pass through these gates, do ensure that you close and secure them each and every time. This maintains site security and prevents unauthorised access to people and vehicles. When you arrive onto site, we would like you to follow the site rules. It's one of our core expectations. It means you don't drive faster than 10 miles an hour. If you're parking up, please reverse park. And if you have to muster, use the muster point in the car park. The minimum PPE requirements on site are safety helmet, eye protection, high vis clothing, protective gloves, and protective footwear. Before you carry out any tasks, there needs to be an approved round in place and we'll explain that process later in the induction with work being carried out by competent and authorised persons. If you see anything different on site when you arrive in terms of hazards and risks which are not in your rounds, take that five minutes to stop, reassess and have a chat with your supervisor. Just create a bit of time to check the works and keep yourself safe on site. One of the key things you can do on site is to keep the housekeeping good as it is one of those main sources of incidents and accidents on site in terms of slips, trips and falls. Please take pride in the work environment and tidy as you go. If you see anything that is unsafe, challenge it. Report unsafe acts and conditions because we'll do something about it. We'll stop the work, we'll reassess we'll make things safe and we'll take the appropriate action that is next necessary. So please, if you do see something, report it and let's take ownership of it and get it resolved. With that in mind, you need to report all incidents to your supervisor and to the Viridor site representative immediately. Smoking is only permitted in designated smoking areas adjacent to your welfare and all media requests should be made through your Virador site representative. Mobile phones can only be used in the welfare area or whilst standing in a safe location away from work areas. Don't remove any waste from site without prior approval. We don't want waste being removed without knowing its designated licensed waste route. And if there's going to be some isolated loan working, then it needs to be reflected in your rounds which are to be approved and the minimum we would expect is that you would identify this to the principal contractor at the start of each day prior to your loan working activity and report back to the con principal contractor upon completion. So again, all loan working must be prior approved and needs to be reflected in your RAMs. So what does this all boil down to? It's as simple as we want you to go home safe at the end of each day. Our focus is upon prevention. We want to prevent all injuries and accidents. Our primary concern is your health and well-being, and that's why we want you to report any observations and unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. The principal contractor has a Safe Hands, Green Hands initiative, which you will be briefed upon at your site induction. It doesn't matter how trivial you may think it may be we'll investigate them. We want to have a minimal impact on our environment, celebrate good working behaviours and have no security breaches on our site. We want to be a good neighbour and minimise our disturbance to the public and to our neighbours. In the event of a site emergency, the site muster point is in the site car park. A muster roll call will be taken by the principal contractor and communicated to the Viridor site representative. In addition, we need to inform the Port of Tilbury Police on 01375 846781 of emergency events, including environmental ones. You will be asked to remain at the muster point until advised otherwise. 
First aid arrangements are located in the Principal Contractor's Site Management Office. There is a local hospital in Basildon, which is about a 15 to 20 minute drive. From the port, you take the A13 heading east and take the A176 and follow the signs to the area hospital. Just to remind everyone, there are no drugs or alcohol allowed on site and there are random tests that are undertaken on a periodic basis. Before you carry out any work activity, you'll need an approved RAMS and work authorisation. All authorisation is required from the principal contractor. Where works are being undertaken alongside the Botany Channel, your Viridor site representative will liaise with the Port of Tilbury and TGP to gain approvals. Once you have an approved set of RAMS and authorisation, please do not deviate from that approved RAMS. If you discover any changes to hazard or risk or to the method, please stop and reassess. Now we're going to talk about general and specific site hazards. The site is currently a demolition and an enabling area. As such, we've got uneven surfaces, we've got trip hazards, and most of the site has no artificial lighting which isn't an issue during these summer months. If you're bringing tools to site, make sure they are in good condition and got the relevant certificates with them. Permitted power tools on site are to be powered by air or 110 volt or petrol. We're not expecting to see 240 volt on site and we're expecting to see these tools of portable appliance tested where that is relevant. And of course, a record of that portable appliance testing. Similarly, if you're bringing chemicals or hazardous substances onto site, make sure you have material safety data sheets and you've got the COSH assessments with you and appropriate storage containers for them. We'll certainly be checking on that. Exclusion and limited access zones are there for a reason. Do not enter them unless authorised to do so. And if you see barriers are open, do close them. We want you to comply with the traffic arrangements in place. So remember there's a 10 mile an hour speed limit on site, but also keep clear of the railway line, say about two meters. Demolition and UXO surveying works can be quite noisy. So where you can, avoid getting too close to the noisy plant and attachments. Use hearing protection as described by your RAMS. And if it isn't within your RAMS, remember you're still free to wear hearing protection. Additionally, speak to your supervisor about getting the RAMS updated to include hearing protection. It's a great suggestion to make and demonstrates good working behaviour. With summer comes hotter, drier days, and when this is combined with demolition activities, airborne dust and silica can become a major issue to your long-term health or a short-term nuisance to our neighbours if it's not managed and controlled well. There are on-site dust suppression methods being employed, and if your working towels work in within a dusty environment, ensure your RAMS detailed dust creation mitigation measures, dust extraction, dampening down, and finally, RPE with appropriate face fit testing as a last resort. One of the main hazards on-site which could result in serious injury or death is the railway crossing adjacent to site. Do not cross the railway crossing if the red lights are flashing. This is monitored by the Port of Tilbury Police and potential outcomes are penalty points on your license, a fine and up to two years imprisonment for those who do not comply to the regulations. This applies to people on foot or on a push bike as well as those driving vehicles. Adjacent to the TGP gatehouse is an access road which leads to the high voltage switchyard. This is only to be used by UKPN and TGP, so do not remove any of the Harris fencing. However, part of the demolition works is in this area 
And so the principal contractor shall coordinate access requirements, site security and demolition activities in a safe and orderly manner. All lay down storage or work requirements around the entire switchyard perimeter must be agreed with this Viridor site representative. One of the things we want to draw your attention to is, is the, the, the fact that we're adjacent to the Botany Channel. Um, we, we certainly encounter rats on, on the site. There's a number of disused buildings. And, and again, that increases the risk of, of rats' urine and coming into contact with rats' urine. Um, so in terms of preventing leptospirosis, it's why we encourage you to wear your gloves all the time. Prevent the cuts, prevent the grazes. And if you come to site and you've got cuts and grazes, one of the things you can do is make sure your hands are clean. Make sure that the, the cuts and grazes are, are covered. You've got waterproof plasters on them before you go out to work. And just check them before you when you come back as well. There's some basic things that you can do. This, this is a very nasty disease. It can start like a flu and then it can lead to vomiting, muscle pains, and ultimately to jaundice, meningitis, and kidney failure. So before you move on to the next slide, just click the little video here and spend a few minutes with Ricky Tomlinson, who's going to take you through a story that's very pertinent to uh, leptospirosis. Health and safety plays a bigger and bigger part in our everyday lives now, and that's a good thing. It's widely used in industry, whether it's in the building industry, the engineering industry, people going away to say it doesn't matter. In my case, I was a building worker, so we were used to hard hats. We didn't want any bricks to fall on us. We wore goggles, because we didn't want anything in our eyes. We wore all sorts of things, and at times we even wore gloves, but no one paid particular attention to gloves. Maybe the lads would use it when they were offloading bricks or concrete blocks and also to stop cuts and grazes but it's also to prevent yourself from getting contaminated. Now that might sound corny, contamination on a building site, never heard of it before. I hadn't until I met Robin here and he's going to tell you what happened to him when he never wore his gloves one day and I must remind you this is a true story. I was working uh, in Poland on a wastewater treatment. What we would do is we would take all of the brown water from the city and we would filter it, clean it, recycle it, take the solids away, dry the solids, and then we would burn the solids. Being a wastewater treatment plant, being a construction site, we had rats. I mean, we had big rats. And I was walking around over a period of probably two to three months around these various sites, uh, going backwards and forwards. And of course we used to walk around, no gloves on. No gloves on, we'd walk around, we'd walk around. I'd go up and down the steelwork, I'd go over the block work, over the site, and you'd be, you know, you'd be holding on. You do. You'd be holding on, you'd have your hands on the handrail. And I absorbed the, yeah, the rat's urine through my hand. I got a high temperature. I was freezing cold. I was constantly being sick. Couldn't keep anything inside me. I kept vomiting. I kept sweating. I had diarrhea. I knew there was something wrong. Can't drink and keep anything down. I couldn't take anything solid. My kidney, my right kidney shut down. So then my left kidney went out. So then you, 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 your blood's getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. No. I'm then on a heart ma machine, having to have an operation uh, because the food I had managed to keep inside me, I hadn't digested. Oh, no. Because your throat or your, your, your food uh, passage into your stomach is part of your nervous system. You know, it's, it's a reflex, but your brain tells it to do it. 
and my brain had decided I'm they ain't going to tell her to do that. So all that was happening was I was I was swallowing the food, oh, I was getting the food into my throat, and all it was doing was backing up and backing up and backing up. So I then got an operation <laughs> across here where they took away a piece of my food pipe, and then they took away a piece of my stomach because that had been affected by the by the um, nervous shutdown. I went from incredibly fit to close to death in a matter of two months, all basically because there was no health and safety requirement for us to wear gloves. And I went into hospital in the September. I came out at the end of November, but I didn't get back to work until the March of the following year. I couldn't work. Yeah. Thank you. Now you've opened my eyes, and I've been in, I've been more or less in the building game since I've been fifteen, yeah. and I've never heard of a story like I would never have thought rat pee could cause that much damage. Yeah. It's a hidden danger, see, isn't it? it and that, and that's the problem. That is the problem. It's a hidden danger. It's not like smoking a cigarette. Yeah, you, know, you smoke a cigarette, you, you can see it. Yeah, you, yeah, see, you can see it. Hang on. I'm yeah. having a puff. Oh, yeah, you okay. see someone smoking, you can get out of the way. You can get it exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a hidden danger that's there that can explode at any damn time and if it does explode and it gets to you Maybe you well could done. be uh, fatalities well there you go I mean you can't you can't that as we say from the horse's mouth so you know the game now hats on goggles on gloves on don't take any chances There are several stockpiles on site, some crushed concrete, others sand or tarmac. These are general exclusion zones. They are not mountains to be climbed up to look at the view. Sides of these may become unstable and likely to move, especially when being added to. As part of the ground bearing slab removals, existing piles are exposed before excavation and cropping down to the required level. Yellow caps are placed over ends of protruding rebar. This provides a visual clue to the presence of rebar, as well as hindering impoundment if you trip on them. If you see anything dangerous, report it to your supervisor. Demolition and enabling works create excavations to expose voids under slabs, manhole chambers and utility service runs. 
These must have barriers around them and set back from leading edges. Do not enter voids such as old manholes, interceptors, deep excavations without approved rams for your activities, which are also to include emergency rescue arrangements. For those of you who need access to the Botany Channel and Culvert area, this is controlled by an access gate and lock and key. To gain permission, you'll again have to go via your Virador site representative who will coordinate your site access arrangements. Once you're through to the other side, there are clear access routes which have been established. There are still slip and trip hazards, and if you're operating within one meter of water, you'll need to wear a suitable life jacket and know how to use it. Part of the approved rounds for your activities will also include emergency rescue arrangements. We're getting to the end of the induction now, and before you get to answer a series of 10 questions, there's just a few things to add. There are some damaged services around site, such as cover plates, You'll find concrete and rebar debris lying around. And along the Botany Channel, you may find some sharps and broken needles. So it's about keeping your eyes and ears open as you're walking around site. I will add a warning about poison hemlock being around, especially on the northern bank of the Botany Channel. It is poisonous if ingested. However, you're more likely to have it rub on your skin so if you do have sensitive skin, it can cause dermatitis. The PPE is there to protect you. It's to protect you from dermatitis. It's there to protect you from rat's urine. It's there to protect you from cuts and scratches. We want you to go home safe at the end of the day, folks. And that's why you are to stick to the site rules and have a safe visit to our site. Once you've finished for the working day, please ensure you sign out at the principal contractor's site office so that we know that you've left site. And remember, there's a railway line just outside the gate, so do pay attention for any flashing lights and the sound of the siren, and do not jump the crossing. Have a safe trip home.